morning, Jay. First Baptist Church, it's so good to uh, be with you this morning. Just want to take a short time before we get to our text today. And today's text is going to be on a very interesting topic. It's, it's a topic that I think many of us think about on a regular basis is love. What do we love? Who do we love? And um, and the whole concept of love. You know, uh, I've said this many a times in preaching, that in the Greek language, love is uh, characterized by a number of words. In the English language, we have one word for it, love. And it means a lot of different things. Everything from I love my car to I love my spouse to I love my children. I, I love an ice cream cone or I love a hot dog or I love whatever, a good steak. Maybe a lobster tail. Uh, we all we, we use the word love in a lot of different ways, and that's understandable. But I'm going to just focus today on what possibly could take our take our love that we have for the world we live in and move it to to another entity. Now that's a big question. What would make me change my idea of loving the world I live in because the Bible is pretty specific on where our love should be attached if we're a born-again Christian and sad to say it's not this world now I do know it's enjoyable living in this world we live in God has given us a great place to to live and to be part of and I know for many of us as we are approaching this weekend, I already know one individual that's already texted me and said that they're going to be going camping this weekend. They're going to be out in nature, which is very, very nice. I just hope that they stay cool. I hope they have air conditioning in their camper because it is quite warm today. Summer's quite warm to go camping in. I remember as a younger person being part of a group called the Stockade and Brigade and Battalion which was a Christian, it's almost like a Christian uh, Boy Scout group that I, that I attended when I was a young person at one of the churches we, we were members at. And I remember going camping in the summer because that was when you went camping as a, as a student in school because you couldn't, you couldn't miss school. Sometimes we went in the, in, in the fall of the year or that when we had extra days off on a weekend and that. But I remember going camping and you know, we didn't grow up living like we do today um, with full air, full on air conditioning. In fact, my first couple of homes that I can remember in Florida did not have central uh, air conditioning. We had some window units. It, it got hot in the house, but we, you know, others didn't have it either, and we lived with it. You know, those who had it, those were the houses you wanted to go visit and you wanted to go hang out at, and in the nice coolness. Today, we live in a day and age where almost every place has air conditioning. And for the summer, we live in that air conditioning. And we are almost a spoiled generation <coughs> when it comes to, to that. But getting back to this topic, the love. Now, before we get to this, though, let me just go over a couple of items. Let me just encourage you. Uh, we are going to be online only this Sunday. Online only this Sunday. And... Um, We'll be doing that uh, from the Fellowship Hall. Now, the 30th, as uh, right now, we are still planning to have service here at the church um, on the 30th, which will be a week from this Sunday. And uh, we're going to make it a, uh, a music day, music Sunday. It'll be like a fifth Sunday sing. There will be a lot of, uh, a lot of special music done. We're praying that people will will help and, and participate in this. It'll be just an enjoyable morning. There'll be some scripture reading, and it'll just be a time of fellowshipping together and coming back together. Uh, also, too, on the 26th of this month, that is a week from, from Wednesday, from this past Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I'd like to have a Sunday school meeting um, here in the church if that's possible, in the Fellowship Hall at 6.30 p.m. If we could do that, that would be a great uh, time because right now, tentatively, we are looking to start back Sunday school services on the 13th of September. That'll be the 13th of September. So we are looking forward to that. Um, and I do need to get with the Sunday school teachers and and this, and, and, uh, this will help us uh, 
get things all accomplished. Now, tomorrow, we have a back-to-school prayer walk beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll be meeting over at the J School Complex. We'll meet um, over by the high school uh, um, office area, and then we'll go around. And those who would like to participate, I know a number of churches are aware of this, and we usually have at least a small turnout for this, but we can go around and pray around the school. So my encouragement is um, remember that that is tomorrow is our back-to-school prayer walk at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, I think that's all the scheduling. Please remember to wear your masks. And when we do come back on the 30th, I do want to encourage and I want to insist that we all wear a mask. I know um, even if you don't usually wear them, we will have them available. They're the throwaway type. They tend to be the least um, prohibitive in, um, in, in breathing in that. I know some of the masks, I have a couple uh, tighter fitting ones that are cloth. They kind of smother you a little bit. I don't want that to be the case. The ones we have are large, and they fit around pretty much every face that I know of. And uh, they're loose enough that, that they will be comfortable, but they're still enough to keep uh, water vapor from, from exiting, especially if we're doing any kind of a song thing. Um, other than those that are participating in the front, maybe, um, leading the service uh, during the time that they're leading the, the rest of us, I do want to insist that we do have masks on. And we will have also to the, the hand sanitizer and that available. We will be meeting in the fellowship hall with overflow into the gymnasium. We're trying to make it to where it's a little bit more comfortable because lately uh, when we've been having the services in the gymnasium, still getting a little warm uh, on the warm side. And we want a better sound also. And we're going to be recording this and sending this out over the Facebook Live also. So enough with that. Let us look at our text today. Our text is going to be found in 1 John chapter 2. And we're going to be looking at three verses, 15, 16, and 17. And this is, uh, now, now John, remember, was the beloved disciple. And he wrote uh, three wonderful epistles, not in plus the Gospel of John, plus the book of, Re of Revelation. He was a prolific writer. He was, uh, and he, ha he comes across in, in this concept of, of having that love of Christ. And here's what he writes in verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. Let's look at this passage. This is very interesting. And this is, uh, he's been talking about loving your brother and, and, and others, that's, and, and saying if you hate your brother, are you really following Christ? You're not really of Christ. And... As a Christian, we live a very, very interesting life. We, we have a dichotomy in our living. And Paul mentions this himself. He said, and he says it from the standpoint of behaving for God and not behaving. He says, I do the things I shouldn't do and I don't do the things I should do. We have a, we have a conflict in us. It's the, it's the flesh, what, what the Bible calls the, the, the flesh or the, or the human being part the non-regenerative man. But when Christ comes into our hearts, when we accept him as Savior, we ask him to take away our sins, and we ask him to, to become our Savior, we now have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And there is a conflict many times between the flesh and the Spirit. So what do we do? Well, at first I want to I want to look at this also. Love not the world. Now, Now, you might say, well, I, I don't go around to loving the world. But really, if you think about it, when you were born, as you're growing up, if you haven't, you know, as a child, we see the wonders of the world. As an adult, we see all that the world has for us many times. And we look at the world, and it's nice. There's nice things in the world. Like in our area, we live in a rural setting. We have a wonderful area up here, um, filled with woods and all sorts of creatures and 
it's it, we have some wonderful things here. If you, you want to go south, you go down to Pensacola Beach, you can be at the beach. You can go north and go to, to the mountains. We have a lot of leisure time available to us here in the United States. We're a very unique country when it comes to this. You know, we served, Carolee and I served as missionaries over in the country of Honduras for three and a half years. Very different lifestyle for the average citizen. Here, the average person, uh, and, and I'm talking about super wealthy, I'm talking about average working class people. In most cases, you, you will have enough wealth, even if you have children, <coughs> excuse me, that you have the ability to go on a vacation. May not be two weeks, may not be four weeks. You might not go to Europe, but you can go up the road and go camping. I know many people in our community camp. And um, camping's a wonderful way of, uh, of having recreation. Uh, my mother used to think going camping was going up the road to the hotel and relaxing at the hotel, and I understand that. My dad likes to go camping in the woods, or he used to all the time. He used to enjoy that. I've enjoyed going camping in the woods. Sometimes I would prefer a hotel room. Um, I, I've never owned a camper, but I've camped in tents. Um, and, and things like this. Uh, we have a wonderful world. Living in the city, all of the wonders of being in the city and, and, doing, and, and doing the things that a city offers. If you've never lived in the city, in a larger city, or if you've never really been much in a, in a larger city, it is an amazing place. These are amazing places at times. You can find almost everything you want. Anything you wanted to, if you're thinking about eating something, you want any types of food, big cities will have all different types of food because you have a, a myriad of different types of people groups in a city. Um, large cities, very convenient. I remember living down in South Florida in the Miami area. I owned a Volkswagen Rabbit uh, for a while and uh, high maintenance, high maintenance. It was not taking care of very well at the beginning of its life and it showed the signs later I could go just up the street I, I could get it fixed when we went out to Texas to a little smaller city much more difficult there was one place that they could fix my car that I knew of and uh, we, we we kind of uh, more rapidly traded that car off because it was not as many opportunities now I will grant it I thought Fort Worth was great when I lived there when I went to seminary and they had a lot of opportunities but not the same as a Miami area. Miami was much larger and w was much more d diverse. With all this being said, loving the world is not a hard thing. We can love the things of the world. We can love the things that that God has given us in this wonderful world we live in. But it says love not the world. Now, how do we change this? Well, really, there's only one way to change this, to shift our love from the world to another person or thing. And that is the love of Jesus Christ. See, when Christ saves us and takes away our sins and we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, that trumps all of the wonders of the world. And I think here, John, John is just spelling it out practically. And in verse 17, uh, you know, he, he mentions in 15, love not the world. If you, don't, if you love the world, you don't have the love of the Father. Meaning, if everything you do is to live for the world, even if you say, I'm a Christian, I'm following Christ, I'm not going to say you're not. But Christians, in their proper behavior, put God before the world. And you might say, well, that's hard. It can be hard. But if you really think about all that Jesus has done for us and that the eternity that we're going to spend with God, it's much greater than the, what, the, just one pop song said, a hundred years we're on this earth. You know, I mean, that, that doesn't stack up. It doesn't add up. A hundred years, if you want to say that, compared to eternity, eternity wins. We're going to be with God for an eternity. The love should be greater there. Well, I think what John is, is pointing out here is, in verse 16, he brings out some of the problems in loving this world, having the lust of the flesh, 
And this doesn't necessarily mean being naughty in, in an immoral way. It's just the lust of the flesh. It's everything I have is based on the flesh and the things of the flesh and the things of this world. And, and sometimes it does lead to naughtiness. But in other times, you might still be a decent person and love the world. I know there are a number of, I have a number of friends that will not profess Christ as Savior. They're decent people. They build up themselves a, a life in this, wor in, in this world, and they think that's the end all. But it's not. And as a Christian, we know this. But verse 17, I think, really anchors verse 15. And the world passes away in the lust thereof. Everything that we will hold dear eventually wears out. What you held very dear and really loved and had to do as a child usually wears out by the time you become an adult. And we start thinking, and even as an adult, younger adults have different priorities than older adults do. And I can attest to, to this. I used to hate when I used to have older people older than me to, to say, well, when you get older, you're going to know. Or when you have a child, you're going to know. When you have this, you're going to know. Well, you're going to really know as time progresses. you got to do it this way because I know better. That used to irk me. But now looking back, most of those talks, they were right. And as a person who's now 58 and who has uh, one child in a group home, uh, Lexus, who's, who's uh, what's it, 97, so to be 23, and one child that's going to graduate from college this coming year, who's 20, um, I can attest that some of those things that I was told when I was 18 and 19 are true. And my mindset is a little different today than it used to be. I used to, the one time in my life, everything was about the, the washing of my vehicle. Oh, I had to have it washed. I had to have it cleaned. I had to do this. I had to do this. And that was so, so important. I, had, I needed the cutting edge of every electronic gadget out there in the market. Not now. You know, our priorities change as we as we as we go through the years. One gentleman told me once. Um, he said that he heard in psychology class that when you marry a, uh, in fact, he as he said, a gal, young, that you'll be married seven times throughout your years to the same woman, but she changes. And 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 he said. We change about seven different times throughout our, 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 our ages in, in our life. And it's very interesting, our priorities do change. Now, uh, what I've been married now, it's going on 35 years this, this year. And what a wonderful, wonderful experience. But I will tell you, uh, I know I have changed over the years. And, and, and I know my wife has developed over the years with different uh, emphases in her life also. You know, we this happens. This is part of growth. This is as we mature, as we get older, and, and just as we grow, it, our, our emphases changed. Look, look at our children. When they were in kindergarten, they had one thing in their mind. Even jumping to first or second grade, they change as they learn more. As they hit uh, fifth and sixth grade, they start looking toward what teenagers do. When they hit the teenage years, then it's like a very, very different uh, person. And when they then hit, they, they mature and they, they graduate out of high school, they become an adult, their mindset changes too. We all change. And the emphasis changes. But to love the world is very common. And we need to, as Christians, be reminded that, yes, we can like the things of this world. Yes, we can have a couple of the things of this world. That's not a problem. I'm not saying don't do that. I don't think John says that don't do this. But where's our love? Where is the focus, the main focus of our lives? Is it on this world and making a life in this world? Or is it following what God desires us to do? And you can make a life in this world. And you can still follow what God desires you to do. Always keeping him first and foremost in your mindset. And if we do it that way, 
then our love toward God demonstrates to God what he's done in our hearts. So love not the world, neither the things of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So there's a warning there, fellow Christian. And I know in, in today's world, it's sometimes we get caught up in the things. In fact, one of the great warnings in not this Sunday and not the following Sunday, because we're going to have fifth Sunday sing, but on the first Sunday in September, we're going to finish our series on the churches. And that church that I will be focusing on is the church of Laodicea. And that is the church that has nothing good set, said about it whatsoever. And God said, you are neither cold nor hot. You act as though you, you have it all and you brag on all the things you have. And yet you are neither cold nor hot and I want to spew you out of my mouth. And you know, we have many who quote, call themselves Christians today who seek after the things of the world only and that God's a side note. God is not never a side note if we know him as Savior. He should be our major focus and center in our lives. We need to try to please him. Now we can do that by striving to do what's well in this world, but not loving the world, living in it, and not to be of it. And Paul talks about this also in various portions of Scripture. So let me encourage us to, today, as we come into the weekend, some of us are going to have some great, enjoyable times. We're going to go out, maybe. Maybe we'll do some fun things. I know this one individual, they're going to go out camping this week, and I'm, I'm happy for them. I hope they have a great time out camping. But we also need to know, too, and remember that, that God's still in control. He still should be the focus of our life and our love, and that we can like the things of this world. We can enjoy the things of this world, but we also need to remember that the focus of our love in our whole being should be toward Christ. That is what a Christian should be. And that is what we should do. Well, I hope that you have a great day today. Let's close in prayer. And uh, we'll, we'll be finished for this, this edition of this uh, broadcasting. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. We do thank you for the things that you give us and that you bestow on us and that you're just so kind and gracious. And that so many things that we have de desires for that, that we can have. But also, too, where our focus is with our love. Do we love the world or do, and the things, or do we love you? From the very beginning of time, things and your creation has gotten in the way uh, in our own minds because of man's shortfall with our relationship with you starting all the way back in the Garden of Eden. And may that not be the case in our lives. May we enjoy the life you give us and the things you, give, you, give, you bestow on us. But may we always put you first in our lives. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless and shalom. <music>